Hi, Hiram here. A couple of weeks ago I did a boil test on this stove that I got from Intense Outdoor Gear. It's uh, John's all-in-one stove. It uses a can of fancy heat, a little pot stand, and the whole bit. I did some uh, boil tests on this. Uh, you've seen this stuff before, but ever since I've done this, the test on this one, I've had a bunch of people asking me what I thought of or if I would test this Magic Heat Magic Stove. So I was able to find one on eBay for fairly cheap. Uh, got it here. And unfortunately, I guess somebody had just repackaged them and were selling them as Tommy Cookers. So they put a label over the English part of the box. So I went to the website. I'll leave a link down below for that. And not much in the way of information. Lots of pictures, but not much in the way of information. Uh, everyday uses. Use it for camping, hunting, hiking, backpacking, boating, fishing, fondues, chafing dishes. Uh, and it's got all kinds of pictures. I mean, okay, you can use it for fondues and stuff or heating up coffee. But here they have a picture of somebody frying potatoes. I'm not sure if that's steak or pork chops and green beans on this. A little far-fetched. And then they have all kinds of other pictures on the site showing somebody making bacon and eggs, heating up a big pot of coffee or tea, uh, heating up a can of beans, somebody heating water out in the snow, <laughs> even using it on a rowboat to heat up their coffee. Okay. So... Like I said, I got one of these. Figured I'll give it a try today. This is what it looks like. It uh, Now this is the way it comes in the box. But the way it's supposed to go, I guess, is it gets stored like this. And then you take this off and put it somewhere. And that's how that goes. So the pot stand is big enough that the can will fit into it this way but on the other way it only goes down so far so that it gives you a pot stand now this is a six hour can of uh, diethylene glycol which should be the same stuff as fancy heat this is only a two hour can this is a six hour can but I'm going to use the uh, two hour can so that it compares fuel to fuel with the one I get on the all-in-one stove. Again, somebody just stuck their label on it and sell it as theirs. But I'm not going to use this. I'll use the uh, other glycol. So this goes on like this. Like so. And then it's got an additional pot stand here. Which I guess... I would have thought that you just put the pot right on this, but I guess this adds some airflow coming through the thing. So this is what I'll do with my first test. Doesn't fit really great. I just think that the uh, wick coming up on this, this will act as a big, huge heat sink. But we'll see what happens. So let me get my water prepped, and I'll be right back for a test. Okay, I've got my water set. It's at 59 degrees. It should go to 60 almost any minute now. I'll light this. Now the distance from the top of the burner to the bottom of the pot is about inch and three quarter. Yep, that's lit. The wick is only pulled out about a quarter of an inch. So inch and three quarter distance there. This thing might be a little bit high. All right, that's burning. Two cups of water sitting at 59 degrees. And let's see where this goes. We're now about 15 minutes into the test. The temperature is up to 164 degrees Fahrenheit. I think you can see that there's a fairly nice blue flame in there. Uh, looks like the flames are coming up and touching the bottom of the pot, but just barely. So let's see what happens from here. Hey, while I still have time here, this test seems to be going a little bit faster than what I thought it would. 
but uh, let me try to answer a question that I've been getting by from lots and lots of people asking me what do I do during all this time when I'm running a test well right off the top I don't leave the area because if it's a open flame or even a closed flame like this shouldn't leave it alone so I'm usually working on something here either making more fire starters or working on another stove or for my enjoyment I get out my Kindle fire I mean I love this thing this is uh, one of the reasons why I was looking for some sort of a power generator like the power pot or the uh, the stove that generates electricity so that I could recharge this thing when I'm out love this thing I have all kinds of information on it pictures movies uh, books that you can download survival 40 ways to make a fire without a match all kinds of stuff so just to answer your questions I don't leave a stove or burner unattended I stay here with them the whole time but I'm usually doing other things or reading so I hope that answers your question looks like this test will be getting done faster than what I thought so be right back this is where I'm amazed that people watch me with these tests like watching paint dry come on still at 211 I may cut off that at earlier time and just leave it at 211 212 in 25 minutes 23 seconds Wow, that is pretty amazing. If I didn't scoop up my note, my notes here, oh, go away. On the other test, it said that it says here that it took me 64 minutes to get two cups of water to a boil using the all-in-one stove. I'll check that and verify that time. On this one, it's two cups of water starting at 59 degrees. Got to a boil. That's one of the problems with this stuff. It leaves off fumes. I wanted to put that out because I want to take a measurement and see how much fuel was used. But uh, that was two cups of water starting at 59 degrees. This time came to a boil in 25 minutes, 23 seconds. Amazing. I kind of thought that maybe this cross piece, you know, they say this, this stuff is safe that you can pick it up even when it's burning. It's hot, but you can pick it up. But anyway, my point was I thought maybe this cross piece would just act like a huge heat sink and make it take even longer. I will have to verify that. So what I'll do now is I'll let this cool a little bit more. I'll put it on my scale, see how much fuel was actually used in this. I'll put that down below here. Hmm. I guess a couple other tests I'll do. Um, I'll try taking off this crossbar, just put the pot right onto the stand here, which is kind of a different. Boy, that's hard to get out, and that's hot. That is hot. The uh, pot stand part, instead of holes, has slots all the way around it. Now I put sizes, or I put weights down below so you can look up and see how much the things weigh individually. But it's an interesting pot stand. I wonder, since it took less than half the time, I wonder if it keeps the heat in instead of letting it fall out. Again, now I'm not knocking the all-in-one, but it did have this big opening. I wonder if the heat was just pouring out and not staying on for the pot. Also with this, one of the problems was that when the pot was on this the heat couldn't come out and across the bottom of the pot because there was no openings on the top just these so it made like a layer that would insulate the pot from the heat I thought maybe about taking and cutting notches or something in this but uh, never got around to that so I'm wasting time here uh, I'll be back I'll put the weight down below and I'll check to make sure that this is the right time 64 minutes on the other tests but again this was two cups of water 59 degrees 
boiling in 25 minutes, 23 seconds with the Magic Heat Magic Stove. Of course, now I didn't use the Magic Heat. I used the Fancy Heat, but it looks like the same stuff. So for those that asked for this, I hope this helps. I will do a couple more tests. Uh, I thank you for watching. I look forward to your input, questions, remarks, helpful suggestions. And as always, watch for my buddy Max. Bye now.